In our classes together, we had some questions about the green colors and how they're mixed. So in this video, I will do a demonstration mixing the different greens using the two yellows and the two blues that we have. And this is a good exercise that you can do with a third or fifth grade class. It always bears repeating not only to experiment with the color, but also to improve the techniques of blending. So I'm starting out with Prussian blue here. And I'm, I'm bringing the color all the way halfway down the, the different column. And I'm going to do two Prussian blue columns here, one with lemon yellow and one with golden yellow. So bring the, the blue halfway down on both columns. And I'm trying a pretty consistent coat covering of blue just so that I can get a, a nice blend with the different, the different yellow. So I'm cleaning my brush really well. First comes the lemon yellow. And when they come to meet, then the greens appear. And here I find that this mixture, lemon yellow and Prussian blue, tend to have the most vibrant greens, which are really spectacular, especially when you're doing plants and trees and outdoor scenes and things. You have a, a, enough variety of blue, green, green, and yellow, green that you can create um, just with these two colors. And the blends, you have to use a soft touch with the brush so that you can get a clear covering, a, you know, a coating of color. Bring the blue down a little bit more. Make more yellow-green. So I'm using sometimes this, the, the face of the bristles because I find that if I'm stroking too hard, I'm actually lifting and pushing the color around. And what I actually want to do is mix the color on the paper. So sometimes I have to just kind of puddle around in the color so that they commingle in a really nice way. Here comes the golden yellow with the Prussian blue. So the golden yellow is more like orange. It's closer to orange. So when you put orange and blue together, you're going to get more of a neutral color, more of a darkened um, brown, even a kind of a muddy color. It really isn't truly green because of the red. The red kind of undoes the vibrancy of the color. And the blue, and the blue, because it's more like green, you're going to have the green and the red coming together as well as the, the orange and the blue coming together. So it tends to be very muddy. But it doesn't mean that this isn't a, a good color for some things. How do you darken golden yellow? Well, you add a little blue to it, and you can see it makes a nice dark orange yellow. Sometimes I have to add a little water. My brush is too dry. But you don't want to add too much because it actually then starts to push the color away. Okay, 
So now I'm going to do the ultramarine blue. Now ultramarine blue has more warmth to it. It's still a cool color, but it's going to be warmer than the Prussian blue. You can see them next to each other. The Prussian blue is closer to greenish and the and the uh, ultramarine blue is more on the purpley side. So I'll have two, two columns with the ultramarine. Add enough color there so that you have plenty to mix with. Rinse your brush well. And one comes in lemon yellow. Now here the color is bright because the lemon yellow brings the brightness, but the color itself is a little bit more on the mossy side because you have the warmth in the ultramarine blue that brings um, a little softness to the green. Plans are not easy, so it's always good to have the children practice. At least once or twice a year they have these kinds of activities where they're not actually going to be making a painting of a thing, but they're opportunities for them to improve their painting skill. Especially for those children who are having a hard time controlling the water, these kinds of activities where the expectations to make a a beautiful recognizable image um, gives the children a little bit of relaxation and freedom to be a little bit messier but um, fulfill a different kind of expectation. So I'm bringing a little bit more blue in to create some more blue greens. Just got a little too yellow. So this little puddling, what it's basically doing is trying not to push the, the color around too much, but the colors that are right there under the brush can be moved around so that they commingle in a sufficient way. So you can try that with your class. And the last column will have a golden yellow with the ultramarine blue. And here are two warm colors, warm on their scale. So you have the warm blue and you have the warm yellow. So when these two come together, they're going to have a very um, dampening effect on each other. It doesn't really make a green, more of a brown more of a, 
a mud color. Yeah, really, as you can see, that the yellow just doesn't have the vibrancy that the green needs. To have a true green. I mean, these are really, these are also green, but they're um, not, not the kind of greens that you would be using uh, on a regular basis. They would be more for shadows and undertones but if your students become very adept at this kind of work they can make suggestions for how you can bring new colors into your compositions these kinds of colors create a different mood than the vibrant colors and as the children get older those kinds of moods are are actually good to paint sometimes an autumn mood versus a summer mood are going to have different qualities of color and so these colors can be introduced into those paintings I'm having a hard time with the Color there but I think I think we're done thanks for watching